HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have footage from some flooding on Hayden Row that was caused by the middle school basketball court ice rink. The planning board met and discussed downtown parking regulations. Golden Pond Assisted Living and Memory Care welcomed in a new executive director. Marathon signs have been placed throughout town as runners train for the big day. And we also caught up with softball coach Dennis Baker as practices and scrimmages are underway. But first, here are a few things happening in town. A few Hopkinton schools will have new start and end times starting in the 2015-2016 school year. Hopkins will start up at 8.15 and end at 2.30. Elmwood and Center School will both start at 9 a.m. and end at 3.15 p.m. The Hopkinton Garden Club won first place at the Boston Flower and Garden Show. And they would like to congratulate their members Henry Schmidt, Deborah Coleman, Kathy Yankee, Audrey Dempsey, Liz Swenson, and Marilyn Mezzett on winning the Blue Ribbon in the Design Division's Circle of Life Club Competition. The group also received the Club Competition Award, a top honor for receiving 95 points or higher in the design scoring. Way to go, Hopkinton Garden Club. Niche.com, a website that ranks high schools, colleges, and neighborhoods throughout the country, ranked Hopkinton as the 12th best public high school in Massachusetts. Overall, the site ranked 14,431 high schools throughout the country based on key statistics and 4.6 million opinions overall from 280,000 students and parents. 110 reviews of Hopkinton High School were sent to Niche, and based on the reviews and the statistics, Hopkinton received an exceptional overall ranking 12th in the state. The Hopkinton Police Department reminds you to be aware for runners training as we get closer to the Boston Marathon. Monday, April 20th is the big day, and on the big day, the Hopkinton Police Department reminds you that there will be no parking in downtown Hopkinton, no parking on school grounds unless authorized. Numerous roads will be closed throughout town and parking will be available at designated lots on South Street and at Hopkinton State Park. For more information on the marathon or anything else going on in Hopkinton, head to our website, hcam.tv. Downtown Hopkinton is growing and recently new businesses such as Vinny's Pizza and Bittersweet Cafe have opened up. With more businesses soon opening their doors in the downtown area, the planning board recently met to discuss adjusting the parking regulations. Greg Mazur, an entrepreneur who owns 30 through 34 Main Street in downtown Hopkinton, applied for a permit to change parking capacity regulations, so his tenant food shops Vinny's Pizza and the soon-to-be-open Yogurt Beach can have 18 seats each. Uh, Vinny's wants to put in about 18 seats and Yoga Beach, uh, before they sign the lease, they want to put in 18 seats. Uh, we're off about a point four in terms of the calculations between the old and the new. So if we reduced down their needs or request from 17 seats each to 16, we would be under where they were before as far as a use in downtown. <coughs> So, in essence, that's, that's what we're asking for. We're asking to have a reduction so that they can get in 18 seats each. Uh, don't believe that it's unreasonable, and um, we did everything that the building department wanted us to do over the last six months, which is, uh, and you're all welcome to go by, is uh, put in a brand new ADA entrance in the back, similar to Bill's, uh, brand new ADA bathrooms, both men's and women's, in the uh, back of the building, uh, and 
had to suck out some of the original uh, parking, which there was not much for an ADA parking space for the ADA um, spot. The majority of the planning board agreed that to increase downtown business, more parking has to be available. Well, it's an old, small downtown lot with a good-sized building on it. Um, at the time it was built, there was no parking requirement and there were no cars, probably, either. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, really, it would be almost impossible for them to ever be able to comply. Um, so, it's just recognizing a downtown situation where parking is shared, there's on-street parking. Right. Um, so, it's just in order to facilitate a downtown and have businesses and restaurants there, these kinds of things have to happen. Yeah. I mean, I look at um, Bittersweet, you know, a mm -hmm. door down, and I don't know technically how many seats they have, but I, it, it seems, you know, that, that if we're trying to encourage these types of businesses, we have to be able to accommodate them. The big actions taken at the planning board meeting was Vinny's Pizza allowed to have 18 seats, the soon-to-be-open Yogurt Beach, which will also be in downtown Hopkinton, can have 18 seats as well. And Paul Mastriani, owner of 77 West Main Street, is allowed to move forward with expanded business and housing development over on Lumber Street. Golden Spoon is expected to be a tenant at that Lumber Street development. This winter, the Parks and Recreation Department, with the help of the DPW, the Fire Department, and a few other Hopkinton organizations, installed an ice rink for public ice skating at the middle school basketball courts. On April 1st, temperatures reached just over 50 degrees, and that led to a bit of an unfortunate situation for anyone hoping to get in some last-minute ice skating. I think it's safe to say ice skating season in Hopkinton has ended. On Wednesday, April 1st, the ice rink at the middle school basketball courts melted, causing a dam to break and the water leaked out into the streets around dismissal time. It made for a wet ride home as temperatures reached near 50 degrees. Here you can see where the water was coming from, right near the gates facing the streets. This year was the first year in a long while the ice rink was put in at the middle school basketball courts. It was a successful effort by Hopkinton Parks and Recreation and many other Hopkinton organizations assisted. The rink was used by many and enjoyed throughout the winter. I guess on the first day of April, Mother Nature decided that winter activities are done. Fortunately, the waterlogged street was cleaned up very quickly. HCAM News recently visited with the staff of Golden Pond Assisted Living on 50 West Main Street as they welcomed in new Executive Director, Dr. Barry Zeltzer. Golden Pond Assisted Living, located at 50 West Main Street in Hopkinton, recently welcomed in their new Executive Director, Dr. Barry Zeltzer. Dr. Zeltzer brings with him to Golden Pond over 20 years of industry experience. I have approximately 20 years of experience in elder care administration. I have a PhD in gerontology, and I've done a lot of work with the memory impaired in developing programs to help improve quality of life. Uh, I find it fascinating to uh, come on board to an organization such as Golden Pond to work with the community and to develop partnerships so that we can bring in creative programming to help people age in place. Some of the employees of Golden Pond talked to HCAM News about the new executive director. This encounter with him, he, he, he actually walked into the kitchen and he said good morning. He ran out of his way to say good morning to little old me. I find that was quite nice of him. Uh, he's very interactive. He's very hands-on. He goes out of his way to talk to all the employees. He's always asking about the residents. Um, he's come into the dining room for lunch and he sat down with some of the residents and talked to them over meals and asking how everything is going. He is wonderful. He does go out of his way to make sure he knows everyone's name, all of his employees as well as residents. And I think that's just great. It's a, it's a very exciting time to be here. I myself have been here for about eight years and I have to say that even after 40 plus years of nursing, I am so um, excited to be a part of it. Um, it's on the cutting edge. And uh, I told Barry the other day, I was excited every day. I'm excited every day to come to work. It's sort of like being in high school when 
you're tired, but you really don't want to miss anything, so you don't take any days off. We're actually really excited to have him here. We, you know, he's wonderful. He's he's a person that we feel has tremendous vision for the future of Golden Pond. He's bringing in um, his focus is primarily programming and how to enhance, you know, what is already good, but to really enhance our programs so that each part of our community benefits by his experience and knowledge, um, bringing in outside resources that we haven't tapped into, but also really using our staff and utilizing them to the best of um, you know, their abilities. So I think he has a lot of enthusiasm and excitement for what's ahead for Golden Pond and what we're trying to do here. I enjoy working with our team of professionals. We have such a dedicated, hardworking staff who enjoy every day being with our residents and doing the best job that they can possibly do for them. My favorite part about the work that I do is being with the residents, enjoying their smiles, mm -hmm. and trying to do whatever I can to make a difference in their quality of life. Coming up on HCAM News, Boston Marathon season is in the air and we will show you a program happening around town that is raising awareness for the many runners that will be training for the big day. Hopkinton Hillers softball team head coach Dennis Baker gave us a look at the upcoming season and Courtney will have our HCAM Insider. A lot more ahead, so don't go anywhere. We are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout Troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout Troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to H Camp News. The Boston Marathon is about three weeks away. With the weather getting warmer and the snow melting, runners have started to take to the streets for training. The Hopkinton Parks and Recreation Commission, with the help of several other local organizations, continued a program to raise awareness and to remind drivers to be cautious of runners getting ready for the big day. You will see signs placed throughout Hopkinton. The signs are an effort by several organizations to make sure drivers look out for runners training as we get closer to the Boston Marathon. Chairman of Hopkinton Parks and Recreation, Bob Dubinsky, explains. So the runner safety program in Hopkinton, Mass. is in its second year. And it started from a tragic accident down in North Carolina where a runner was killed when training for the marathon. Uh, here in Hopkinton, uh, with a collaboration of six major groups, we took the effort of runner safety very seriously and created the signage that you'll see all around town to go ahead and make drivers and folks aware that there's runners on the street. This is very important this year because of the amount of snow we have and the snow banks which still exist, which further complicate the problem with seeing runners while they're training. So this is a very important effort that's been supported by six major groups in town. The Hopkinton Police, the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce, Hopkinton Park and Rec, Hopkinton Marathon Fund, the 26.2 Foundation, and importantly, the Runners Club, which has membership of over 300, which trains in Hopkinton every weekend up until the marathon. All these groups have come together to go ahead and make people in Hopkinton aware of the runners. Roads are narrower than, than they usually are. Roads are still slippery from melting snow. And we want to place these signs out there so, so runners as well as um, people operating cars um, will just be conscientious or conscious, I suppose, of that it is marathon season, even though it doesn't feel like it's marathon season right now. It is marathon season. People will be running. Athletes will be training. And we all need to be aware of that, especially on weekends. So the first area of concern is the center of town. That's where the Hopkinton Runner Club runs every weekend. So they collect there, they run a portion of the, uh, the race route into Boston, and then in, on the back roads. It's a very important uh, area to be concerned about runners because of the limited, again, visibility with the, with the snow that still remains with us today. 
So you'll see a lot of people running the actual marathon route. So that 135 area from town center towards Ashland, you'll see a lot of folks probably on Hayden Row heading towards Milford, uh, Wood Street heading towards Westboro, West Main heading towards uh, Upton. You'll see a lot of folks starting in the center of town moving outward. So some 300 signs will be distributed throughout the town this weekend, spread out over all the roads, and that'll be implemented by the Hopkinton Junior Class as part of their high school program for community service. There's one and only Boston Marathon, but people need to remember it all starts here in Hopkinton. This is where the marathon starts and it ends in Boston. So it's an important factor that we as a community support and look out for these runners training in our backyard. After a snowy winter, it is great to see the Hopkinton softball team back in preseason action. Head coach of the Hopkinton Hillers, Dennis Baker, gave HCAM News a preview of this year's team. Despite the rough winter and record-breaking snow, softball season has returned. And the squad this past week played a scrimmage game against Hudson at the Fruit Street Fields. The high school fields may not be ready, but head coach Dennis Baker Jr. is certainly ready for the season to start. We have a lot of returning players. The girls we have coming back are a lot of solid returning varsity girls. And the one thing about this town, we, we've had great softball here since long before I got here. Um, so, so we don't, we, we just kind of reload here at Hopkinton. We're going to have to break a few new girls in, but we feel really good about the team we have coming back. Now, uh, watching this game today, uh, a couple big hits uh, I saw, and you're getting the uh, young players a chance to get in there as well. It, it must be good to be able to have this facility where you can have these scrimmages and be ready for the season. Yes, at least we know, uh, you know, kind of what we're dealing with because we're out here playing game situations. Uh, we come down here to practice once or twice a week also. Uh, we get a lot done in the gym for our practices, but you really can't simulate the game unless you're out here in an open field, um, especially outfielders, the way the ball comes off the bat, seeing who can track a fly ball. So we're really lucky to have this facility. A lot of teams, you know, if they have a turf field at their school, they have to share it with five or six other teams. We're really lucky to have uh, use of this facility. And it, and it really has helped us. You can see the difference between last week when we first came out here and now till today, we've really grown a lot in just five or six days. Uh, certainly, and now a bit of a different schedule situation uh, this year with all the snow. It kind of pushed the high school season back two weeks. Uh, could be more depending on when all this snow melts. Uh, but you were uh, mentioning before that there's going to be pretty much uh, every Hockamock team playing over at the Medway uh, turf fields. Uh, how, does, how do these uh, schedule changes uh, affect your team? Does it make it a little tougher to prepare? I think it does make it a little tougher, and we will see at the end of the season when, when all these games have been moved to the end. They talked for a little while about playing a 14-game season, but the MIA moved the cutoff deadline for the tournament back a week, which should help us a little bit. But, um, you know, I, I, we'll probably have some rainouts in May, and we'll be playing seven out of eight days in late May. Uh, I'm just lucky it's this sport and not baseball that I used to coach, where we can just kind of roll the same girl out every day and not have to worry about arms. Um, but it definitely presents, you know, a, a big challenge, especially early in the season. You know, just the uncertainty, really, of when we're going to play. Because we have that first day over in Medway, but other than that, you know, maybe our fields will be ready after that, and maybe they won't. Right, and uh, speaking of uh, rolling the arm out there every day, Juliet Hume expected to uh, be the main pitcher uh, for the Hillers this year. How's she looking so far in the early goings? Uh, she's looking good. She's looking just what we would expect from Juliet. She really came on about midway through last year um, and really created a nice duo between her and Alyssa. And, you know, Juliet gained a lot of experience. She had a big save against the state champion Bellingham Blackhawks. She won two of our tournament games in relief. So she really gained a lot of experience, uh, and she's ready, I think, to show the league, you know, what she has. I think a lot of people might breathe a little sigh of relief because Alyssa Cardinal's gone, but when they see Juliet come out, um, they, they might wish that Alyssa was back. <laughs> uh, now, speaking of um, uh, last year, you went to the playoffs, had a good run. Your father, though, with the Bellingham uh, Blackhawks, won a state championship. 
Has there been a little uh, nagging going on throughout the off season? A little bit. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's a great honor for him. It took him 40 years almost between coaching baseball and softball to win a state title. He probably should have a couple more, but I don't like to, you know, ride him too hard about that. But, um, you know, it, I told him he probably should retire. The day I win a state title, I might leave the field and never come back and go out on top. But he is coming back. Uh, I don't think he would know what else to do with himself except coach. Um, so it's a great honor for him. I was there rooting them on. Some of the girls are shocked that I actually root for Bellingham, but I went to all their tournament games, uh, rooted really hard for them and each and every one. But now that the season has started in the Tri-Valley, uh, we, we hope to beat them again. I've been here two years. We've played four times, and we've each split, um, you know, each year one and one. We were last year the only team to beat them. They were 26 and one, and we were their only loss of the season. So we do take a lot of pride in that. We know they'll be a, a tough challenge. They lost a lot of girls, but like they're kind of like us. They they just they don't rebuild. They reload. Uh, so we know it's going to be a, another fierce battle with them, like it always is. And lastly, coach, uh, with the weather, was everything on time this year as far as training and conditioning wise? I know you had this field available, so everything must have been pretty much on time. Pretty much, and you know, as it goes every year, we're usually in the gym for the first two weeks anyway. Um, even without the snow, our field generally isn't ready for a couple weeks, so it doesn't feel too out of the ordinary right now. Uh, we, we've really done a good job. My assistant coach, Coach Scott Soderberg, he and I have worked together between baseball and softball for about 12 years now. We really, uh, we have a lot of efficient practices inside. We get a lot done. We really feel good about what we do and how we practice with the girls indoors. But we're right at the point now, we're getting a little bit restless. Um, but, you know, for now, it's kind of like it has been the last few years. Coming up at 5 p.m. Tuesday, April 7th, Hopkinton Police Chief Edward Lee and Hopkinton Fire Chief Ken Clark will be live on HCAM taking your questions. You can email questions ahead of time to chiefslog at hcam.tv. For more about programming coming up on the HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Monday, April 6th at 6.30 p.m., deciding when to make the move out of the home is discussed in Senior View. We try to figure out what are your goals, What's your time frame? What's your motivation for, meet, for moving? What's the situation with the house? Now, not, not just the value of the house, but all the stuff in it. At 7 p.m., Johnny Flaherty shares his down-to-earth poetry in Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. When your young pearls of wisdom pass you by, usually miss them due to roving eye. When you're old, these same pearls find a friend who'll embrace them, embellish them, Pass them on to your kin. In Physician Focus at 8.30 p.m., the different causes of cancer are the topic of conversation. You're much more likely to develop a cancer in those cells that have a long history of lots of divisions as opposed to cells that don't divide that frequently throughout your lifespan. On Tuesday, April 7th at 5 p.m. Tune in to hear your questions answered live on the air by the Chiefs of Hopkinton's Bravest and Finest in the Chiefs Log, live on HCAM TV. Send a question in to chiefslog at hcam.tv or call 508-625-1640 during the program. At 6.30 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, April 8th at 11 a.m., it's a poetry marathon as local residents and poets share their favorite poetry. At 12.30 p.m., the Elementary School Building Committee shares the blueprints for the different sites in their latest community workshop. On HCAM Ed, 5th graders perform and show off their talents. 8th grade and high school students also perform in the Music in Our School's 8th grade and high school chorus and band concerts. Don't forget to send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV if you want to be added to the HCAM Insider newsletter mailing list. And if you do receive it, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, HCAM.TV, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you.
email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and happy April. Yeah.